Okay, so dito sa ating next video ay pag-aaralan naman natin yung history ng mga sinaunang computing devices. Bukod sa Abacus, along the way, lumipas ang maraming mga taon na develop yung mga unang computing devices. So tingnan natin ngayon sa video na ito. Kauna-unahang naitala ang salitang computer ni Richard Brathwaite. Isang English poet sa kanyang aklat na The Young Man's Cleanings noong 1613. Ngunit ayon sa ibang aklat, ang salitang computer ay common na salita sa panahon nila sapagkat ito ay alam na na karamihan mula pa noong 1579 na nagpapahiwatig na ang tinutukoy na salita ay walang iba kundi ang tao na siyang gumagawa ng mga calculation. Sa madaling sabi, ang taong nagkakalculate ay ang siyang computer o taga-compute. Si Ginoong Blaise Pascal, isang French mathematician, ay nakagawa ng na isang mechanical machine na kaya mag-compute ng whole numbers, addition, at subtraction. Noong 1801, isang taghabi ng fabric ay nakaimbento ng makina na nagpapadali sa paghahabi ng fabric. Siya si Jose Marie Jacquard. Ang kanyang imbensyon ay gumamit ng mga cards na may butas na sistematikong dinisign para mapadali ang paghahabi. Ang difference engine ay isang makina na ginagamit para sa tabulation at calculation ng polynomial functions. Ang konsepto ay nagmula kay Johann Helfrich von Müller noong 1786. Ngunit si Charles Babbage na isang British mathematician at inventor ang nagbigay ng mas detalyadong paraan upang magawa ito. Ang makinang ito ay may kakayahan na automatikong mag-calculate ng mga bilang na kayang maglabas ng output para maiprint sa isang papel sa umagitan ng old system of printing na gamit ay plates. Augusta Ada King Noel, isang countess ng Lovelace, na kilala rin bilang Ada Lovelace, isang British ng panahon ng umuusbong ang industriya at kauna-unahang nagsulat ng isang program para sa computer machine na ginawa ni Charles Babbage upang i-compute ang Bernoulli numbers. Kinilala ng US Department of Defense si Ada Lovelace at ipinangalan sa kanya ang kanilang computer language. Ang Ada Computer Language ang siyang ginamit para sa paglalakbay patungong buwan noong 1960s. Noong 1936, isang British mathematician ang nakaimbento ng abstract mathematical model na tinawag na Turing Machine na siyang naglapat ng pundasyon para sa field ng computing theory. Ang pinakaprestiryosong award na iginagawat katulad ng Nobel Prize ay ang Turing Award. Si Alan Turing kasama si Alonzo Church ay nagtanggang mag-solve sa problem na ibinigay ng isang mahusay na German mathematician na nagangalang David Hilbert. Ang tanong ay patungkol sa kung may algorithm ba na makakasagot sa anumang mathematical proposition sa magitan lamang ng true or false. Si Ginoong Alonso Church ay nakagawa ng mathematical functions and number theory na tinawag na lambda calculus. Samantalang si Ginoong Alan Turing ay nakagawa ng isang computational machine na maaari makapag-solve ng mathematical problems sa iba't ibang paraan o algorithms. Ang mga commercial computers ng unang henerasyon ay gumamit ng mga vacuum tubes para sa kanilang mga computer machines. Sabalit ito ay madaling uminit at madaling masira. Kumukonsumo ito ng kuryente at kailangan ng magandang air condition upang mapanatili ang reliability ng computer. Sa panahong ito rin ay sinimulang gamitin ang magnetic tape drums bilang storage device at tinawag noon bilang isa sa mga peripheral devices. Sa pagkakaimbento ng transistor ni Nina John Bardeen, Walter H. Brattain, and William B. Shockley ang nagbigay daan upang isilang ang pangalawang yugto ng computer generation. Pinalitan nito ang mga naunang vacuum tubes. Sa panahong iyon ay naimbento din ang magnetic cores na siyang naging intermediate memory para sa mga computers noong panahong iyon. 
Sa pangatlong henerasyon ay sinilang ang mga integrated circuits at circuit boards na mga pinaliit na piyesa at wiring. Si Gordon Moore, isa sa mga founders ng kumpanyang Intel, ay nagsabi na ang dami ng bilang ng mga integrated circuits ay dodoble kada dalawang taon. At ito nga ay nangyari at ang pattern nito ng pagdami ng ICs ay tinawag na Moore's Law. Sa integrated circuits, napapaloob ang maraming connected transistors. Ang transistors ay ginagamit din para sa pag-construct ng memory ng computer at ang isang transistor ay nagre-represent ng isang bit ng information. Sa panahong ito ay mas dumami na dumami ang bilang ng mga transistors at pagsilang ng mga microchips. Panoorin natin ang video clip na ito. Microfocus, creators of visual programming tools for software development, is pleased to provide major funding for the Computer Chronicles, the story of this continuing evolution. In 1979, the Computer Museum houses the most extensive collection of early computers in the world. Its galleries feature some of the earliest known calculators, like the Pascaline, invented by the French mathematician Blaise Pascal in 1642. The Pascaline stored numbers on 10 little rotating dials, moving one dial up to 10, moved the next dial one notch, and so on. It was the first consistently reliable example of a computing machine. In the late 1800s, Herman Hollerith devised a card punch calculator to speed the tabulation of the 1890 census. The cards were hand punched, but electrically read a concept that showed up much later in the earliest IBM machines and is still used occasionally today. The forerunners of modern computers didn't appear until the late 1930s and 1940s. The Whirlwind, of which only a few parts remain, was a massive machine, covering 3,000 square feet and weighing over three tons. The heat given off by its 18,000 tubes required constant monitoring, and in spite of its great mass, the Whirlwind's processing capacity was about the same as a present-day 16-bit microprocessor. It was not until the invention of the transistor in 1947 that a new era of smaller, more efficient computers became a reality. This is the TX0, the world's first general-purpose computer using transistors. And it still works. We'll see a demonstration coming up next. The TX0 was an experiment in transistorization, the first solid-state general-purpose computer. Its transistors were encased in little removable tubes so that they could be easily checked. Designed and built at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1956, the machine used a modest 5,000 watts of power. Punch tape served as an input device, rewound by hand after each use. Although the machine was transistorized, it was and still is very sensitive to heat and will only run if the temperature stays below 80 degrees. The TX0 was equipped with some very modern peripherals, a video screen and a light pen, a half inch video game program involving a mouse with a memory, threading its way through a maze to reach a piece of cheese. TX0 was built at Lincoln Laboratory, and the notion was to test two ideas. One was uh, transistorized uh, circuitry, and the second thing that it was designed to do was to test a very large memory. And it um, it did that very well. And then and then it was used. Then it was then it was moved moved to MIT uh, for 
uh, for real use. But uh, its its role really was a circuit te a circuit tester and a and a, and a and a memory tester. Displayed in the computer museum's lobby are some of the biggest solid state machines ever made: supercomputers, the IBM Stretch, Control Data 6600, and the ILIAC 4 represented the most powerful class of computers of their time. Well, the ILIAC uh, began with some ideas in the early 60s for uh, doing a lot of computing in parallel. And the idea behind ILIAC is to have a number of processing elements, uh, in this case 64 processing elements, each with uh, a small amount of memory, and then to have a single instruction that executes, uh, that, that operates on all of that data in parallel, so that in fact you get speed by this massive parallelism. LEX's main effect was to, was as byproducts to, uh, they, they stimulated the use of uh, semiconductor memory. Uh, it also stimulated the idea to make faster machines and the fact that uh, fast machines were really important uh, in a whole, whole bunch of applications. The development of integrated circuits paved the way for faster, smaller, more powerful machines and the mini computers of the 1960s. But what was considered small in those days bears little resemblance to what we call personal today. Some people consider this link computer to be the first truly personal computer. It has a keyboard, it has a CRT, it even has mass storage devices. But this part was only the terminal. This in fact was the computer and in the days of this computer, this was considered portable because it was on wheels. Mini computers were a major breakthrough, equaled only by the appearance of microcomputers in the next decade. Progress in very large scale integration of circuits promises even further size reductions and increased processing capacity. But the future holds more than just a change in the relationship between power, size, and speed. Well, I think the the next sets of challenges that we, we have right now are going to be integrating video and television and voice into, into machines. And I, I think that those are, are beginning to, to happen uh, to a reasonable uh, degree. Um, and maybe, I can't, I can't predict whether the video disc will, will come in or, or not, uh, or whether that kind of, uh, how, how important that technology is going to be. But I think just the notion of storing pictures and operating on those pictures, that's kind of the next frontier. Okay, so yan yung mga early computing devices. No? So, sa ating history, ay nakita natin paano na-develop ang computer system. So, kung ito ay pag-aaralan nyo sa inyong extra time, no? mag-research pa kayo tungkol sa history, mabibigyan kayo nito ng mas malay pang kalaman tungkol sa history ng ating computer system. Magkita po tayo sa atin sa sunod na video.